Hey everyone, it's Lance Sessions, head coach of Bucks Gaming. Going to be running through some plays and moments through our playoff run in Season 6. Uh, hopefully you can learn a few tips or get something out of these plays for your Pro-Am team or if you want to see kind of what we implement at Bucks Gaming. So, first play here, a sideline out of bounds against Dukes Infinitos. Uh, it's not going to be game changing, but something that Pro-Am teams don't think about is we're going to send a, a wing cut from our point guard on the point guard's corner. So if you look with Dukes, Vandy, who's in the left corner, is their point guard. Uh, so some Pro-Am teams don't really think about that player not being able to take the cut. Usually the corner guy plays the cut. So as you can see through this play, we inbound Johnny. We send Cooks on the cut. Now, Cooks' read, you're going to think it's the wrong read because the guy in the right corner named Bumpy Don is wide open. But we actually pass it to Johnny first because usually most defenses rotate. Uh, here, Hez from Dukes doesn't rotate. So Johnny gets the pass here, and then he makes the extra read to the corner uh, to Don for the wide open three. And so a lot of the things that are kind of going through our players' heads here with the wing cut is we're going to do it on that point guard side. So if someone's going to rotate, it's going to be the right corner off our power forward. When Cooks catches it, he's anticipating the rotation from the lock going into the corner. Now the lock ends up not doing that. So then Johnny now has to make the read to Don. Gives us a three here. Something simple, but something, something that people don't think about. And as you're watching these plays, sometimes you think, oh, he made the wrong pass. But uh, in 2K, as everyone knows, with all the rotations, like you're anticipating a rotation coming. So that'll be the moment one. Uh, for the second moment here, uh, this is really just fundamental uh, gameplay. So as a shooting guard, uh, Johnny, his job really, one of his main priorities of his job is to get back on defense stop guys from getting easy points so here's something simple uh, we, we have an offensive set here where cooks plays on the right wing he wraps we're trying to get the lock off of him Don thinks he has a pocket which is where a late closeout from a defender ends up not being the case Johnny does a great job getting back we're up seven in this moment and so giving up any type of free points in these situations is just something you want to stay away from he does a great job getting back gets his hand up gets in the lane we get a steal go back the other way um, as they bring it up the court, now we just need to capitalize up seven. Johnny made a good play. Our last offensive possession was bad. An early up down from Walnut where he was trying to anticipate how Godlike was going to play it. Uh, Cooks has nothing, gets it to Johnny on the right wing, and he's going to work PNR late. And sometimes the kid just finds, sometimes Johnny just finds his way to, to find a wide open shots when maybe other players couldn't find it. So this is just all him. Uh, for the third moment here, uh, just talking about using the sideline as a defender. Uh, so if you notice, the bringing the ball up, this is nothing crazy, but some, something to think about using the sideline as a defender if you've played basketball, something you're taught. Uh, even in 2K, you could utilize it here. So Johnny's going to try to keep Killy up the wing, up on the sideline, and it's going to be able to create a moment where Don can come get a blitz in if you wanted to. And so something to, to implement on your prime team or if you play rec or anything, um, or even if you just are a lock learning the game, that you could use a sideline to help you know, corner guards into, you know, you can't go left because he's going to go out of bounds. So there's only really one way he can go and that lets your power forward end up getting a blitz yeah. steal. Uh, it's going to be nothing crazy, but you're going to watch. Um, we put both our bigs in the corners. Um, our lock is on Kai. Kai is one of their best players. Um, and Johnny is on ball. Cooks is on the wing with the lock. So almost the same kind of matchups you would originally have as a defense. But as you're going to see, we're really pinching and showing our wings, really making them be able, okay, if you're going to hit, a guy you're gonna have to hit, you know, the their forwards, their lock or their power forward. Um, and we really wanted to capitalize on, of course, us also running five out all year uh, last season is, we understand like the difficulties of like the popper being able to find those little openings. Um, sometimes the contests on those, a little 8% would, show, would make them be able to not shoot very well. Uh, Walnut all year, he, I thought they did a great job be becoming a, a good popper in the league, but we just knew the weaknesses and strengths that would come with this. And so our rotation points on this play essentially was Walnut's going to go and then he's going to be the one that just ends up sticking to the guard. So he's actually going to, we're going to rotate our lock to the corner. Now Walnut's actually just going to be man to man on Bear. Bear ends up walking back, actually takes a pretty good midi. It's open. He just misses it. Cooks tries to show a little bit, but just kind of like a idea of just to kind of show you like what our mindset here is. It's just not random movements and guys just going here. Like this is stuff that we're actually trying to implement uh, with this. And um, at the end of the day, everyone's going to think, well, that's a mismatch. But by the time Bear does get the ball with Walnut on him, he's only going to have maybe five to seven seconds to work. And with that, we do feel like that we, he can play enough defense in that amount of time for us to get a stop there. So a little defensive movement, defensive um, look for us there. 
Uh, so here's kind of another defensive kind of set rotation that we, we've done here. Uh, so it's T-Wolves, Silent Out of Bounds. So really, let's start with the matchups. It's just your traditional kind of matchups. We're gonna have everybody traditionally, like you would put them, you know, power forward is on the center, locks on point guard, everyone just in their normal spots. Uh, but one thing I wanted to just highlight here is like where our rotation point was is and like how we're trying to get there. So last time we rotated completely off slaughter. Again, we wanted to make the center. If there's anybody that's gonna take those 50-50 shots, it's gonna be the center, it's the lowest three pointers, the hardest shot to green. Uh, so if you notice in Don here, he's over leaking in the corner. And now Dossix, our lock, is playing too. So we have two tall defenders with a bunch of uh, stats, interceptor badges, all those um, that's kind of being able to shade each other. And also though, if you're watching Wallen in the right corner, same thing where Cooks isn't gonna be able to play as much between those two, but he's trying to pinch, but Wallen is trying to also edge, not make it look so obvious that Don is the one dropping here. Slaughter is also helping us here. He's standing out of bounds, so thank you Slaughter for this. Uh, Don goes down and he puts himself in position and then the rotation point where walnut just comes out naturally so if you watch this play through itself it's just the iq moments of these like we have a set point and i'm sure the t-wolves can see this uh but they just have to you know make those adjustments throughout the game like not you know making sure that slaughter has those shots and he can hit those shots but most of this possession is standing bounce they try to hit a cut our rotation point walnut comes back out um and that ends up us getting a stop from this so just something to think about with those like iq plays like not being selfish like thinking you're the center you have to go and someone else is going to pick up your man walnut and everybody does a good job here of uh, you know coming back out and kind of having a team unity on defense you know you got to have like one mindset when we go into these moments so uh it was good adjustments by us uh, after game one like getting our butts beat that bad by 30. um you know it's a testament to the guys to be able to switch their play styles up and then the last play I had to show it because in the moment, so it's T Wolves playoffs, um, quarterfinals, tied 1 1. We got, we lost by 30 game one. Uh, played much better game two at Cameron when we won by. It might have been like seven or plus, something like that. Now it's game three. It's 53 48, so it's a five point game. Uh, and this moment at the time, like people probably don't remember this, but this is probably one of the biggest plays of the game. And it's just something that Walnut just does that not a lot of centers do. So if you're a center out there or a player, something to consider, uh, maybe adding to your arsenal things that you do. There's a there's a danger point with this is if you do this and you mess it up, it's pretty bad, but you'll see. So I'll play this. So again, five point game, two minutes, 30 seconds in the fourth quarter. So this is like big time moment. Every point you can get uh, is something we're looking for. So Walnut, we throw it up court. Cooks is feeling a little pressured. We don't want to get a turnover. Walnut catches it at half court. And one thing about Walnut is he doesn't vault like pass fake the ball. He pump fakes it like for shots. Like he shot fakes it. He actually does it and TB reaches and it gives us a three point shooting foul. And so in this moment where, you know, we're just getting the ball up, Walnut's always done this throughout the entire of the year where he does a shot fake and it actually came through for us in one of the biggest moments of this season uh, right there to give us three points for free. Uh, without us doing anything and in those moments you can just see when everybody's faces on the teams like Everybody knows internally like how big of a play that was even though it was something that was so small to be able to get three free points uh, T-Wolves excellent team. They always do a good job of making you work for every basket So the fact that Walnut was able to just kind of get us a sneaky free three points um, As you if you watch this game and go back and watch it as you progress through this You'll notice how big of those three points mattered to us when it came down to the end because they end up getting it within about four points. So without that three point play, uh, it could have been easily a tied game or a little bit of a different situation where we had to play it differently. And that'll be it for some plays and moments from season six playoff run. Uh, excited for season seven and I'll see you guys next time.